VO2 max. You've probably heard that term thrown around, especially if you're into fitness, endurance sports, and healthy living. It's one of the most important metrics to understand your fitness level and how efficiently your body consumes oxygen during heavy exercise. Well, big news, Whoop just launched their brand new VO2 max tracking feature, and they're promising remarkable accuracy within 10% or less mean absolute percent error compared to lab-based gold standard tests. That's quite a bold promise from Whoop, and it immediately got my attention. So today I'm gonna put Whoop's VO2 max feature to the test. I'll start by comparing Whoop's estimates against my own recent lab tested VO2 max that I've measured for both running and cycling. You normally measure VO2 max with a mask that looks similar to this one, where you can exactly measure the gases you inhale and exhale. So it would actually be really impressive if Whoop can estimate this with just a Whoop strap. This video will be an initial NS1 test, and in the coming weeks I'll plan a deeper dive with a larger sample group to see how Whoop performs across different athletes. In this video, we'll also take a quick look at the estimates of a few other brands like Garmin, Apple, Sunto, Aura, and Samsung. And finally, I'll also explain what you need to do to get the Whoop VO2 Max estimate according to Whoop's guidelines. However, let's first briefly discuss what VO2 Max actually is. VO2 Max, simply put, well, relatively simply put, is the maximum volume of oxygen your body can consume during intense exercise, measured in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. So milliliter per kilogram per minute. In practical terms, that means that a higher VO2 max score generally means better endurance, improved efficiency, and enhanced overall fitness. Now, a high VO2 max, of course, gives you some athletic bragging rights, and you might have heard some very large numbers being thrown around. Tadek Pogacar, for instance, is said to have a VO2 max of 89.4 milliliters per kilogram per minute, which is just a crazy number to me. As normal people can generally be extremely happy if you reach 60 or even 55 milliliters per kilogram per minute. But it's not just about athletic performance, as VO2 max is also a solid indicator of your overall health and longevity. Research seems to show that a better VO2 max, a higher VO2 max, at least correlates, so we don't know any causal effects here, with a lower risk of many chronic conditions, such as heart disease and metabolic disorders. Essentially, it's just a good benchmark to track how your cardio fitness and general health are progressing over time. All right, now that you know what VO2 max is and why it's interesting, what exactly do you need to do to get a great solid first VO2 max readout from the Whoop strap. Well, first of all, make sure that your weight in the app is up to date. Because VO2 max specifically relates to your body weight, keeping your profile up to date, especially your weight, is absolutely crucial if you want a reliable and precise result. Why is that exactly? Well, because the VO2 max measurement actually takes your body weight as a direct factor in the formula. So accuracy here really matters to get a meaningful estimate. You can find your VO2 max estimate in the strain section underneath the heart rate zones in the Whoop app. It's important to mention that Whoop calculates and updates your VO2 max estimates only once a week every Tuesday. There isn't any on-demand feature here because your VO2 max tends to change gradually over time rather than hour to hour or even day to day. Whoop provides a one month and six month view that gives you a clear picture of your progress. But what information does Whoop actually use to calculate its VO2 max estimate? Well, first of all, as I said, keep your profile updated because it includes weight as we just discussed, but also height and biological sex. Second, Whoop recommends logging at least one 15 minute or more run each week. But there's one important detail here. You need to manually start your activity in the Whoop app as a run and ensure that track route is toggled on. When using GPS during your run, Whoop's proprietary algorithm gets better data, resulting in a more precise VO2 max estimate. According to Whoop, if you skip recording these sessions, they will still give you your estimates based on your recovery, sleep, daily strain, but these weekly GPS running sessions will significantly improve their precision. So how has Whoop actually built this VO2 max estimate and how have they validated it? Well, we actually don't know a lot. What I do know is that Whoop says that over multiple years, they've collected data from diverse participants undertaking maximal intensity exercise. They use what is known as a metabolic card, similar to how we all measure VO2 max in the lab, basically the gold standard for measuring how efficiently your body consumes oxygen. It looks and functions similar to a mask like this that measures the oxygen you inhale and the carbon dioxide you exhale. Whoop then uses what they say is an extensive data set, we don't know how extensive, to build their VO2 max estimate algorithm. It combines physiological markers like recovery and sleep quality from your Whoop data with your heart rate and GPS data collected during activities, plus unique demographic inputs such as height, weight, and biological sex. 
According to Whoop, this approach has resulted in their new VU2 Max feature delivering accuracy within less than 10% average absolute error compared to those of lab test results. Though of course we don't know if it works better for specific subgroups in the population and how they did their validation exactly. So of course we want to do some independent testing of this feature, let's get to those results. Today's experiment will involve my own running and cycling VU2 Max. In addition, I tracked GPS enabled runs with the Whoop strap, kept my profile information up to date, which enabled Whoop to calculate my VU2 Max. I'll compare these estimates directly to the lab-based VU2 max values for cycling and running I've measured with the help from the Austrian Institute for Sports Medicine. But let's start by looking at the performance of some other smartwatch brands for VU2 max estimation and at the end we'll look at Whoop. And here we have a nice overview and let's start by looking at my lab test results which you can see on the left right here. Along the horizontal axis we have the different devices that I use Along the vertical axis, we have my VU2 max values. So the height of the bar and the number indicate the VU2 max value. And I also indicate when the measurement was taken on top of each bar. I'll add the results for each of the devices as we're discussing them. And I did two reference tests. So the first reference test right here is for cycling, where I had a VU2 max of 58. And the second test I did was for running where I had a VU2 max of 54. So I got a different result for the two tests and I got a lower result for running, which I think is actually atypical because normally they might see a better result for running, but I also think they might test just more runners and I'm a cyclist. So the reason running is lower, I'm not exactly sure, but I have a couple of explanations. First of all, it's just not my main sport. I'm just getting started, so my body's not optimized for it. Second, with the running test, I'm not sure I was actually as exhausted as for cycling. I just wasn't able to keep up with the tempo because they keep increasing the tempo. And at some point I was just afraid of falling off the device, so I just had to stop. It could also be that I didn't completely reach the plateau and that my actual VU2 max might be a little bit higher even for running. Though the people at the lab said they could see me reaching a plateau already, so maybe I just really have a lower VU2 max for running. And most devices out there actually ask to make your view to max for running and not for cycling. I tried to indicate that as best as possible with these two different colors here. So green for cycling and blue for running. I think Garmin is the only one where I got a cycling view to max. And for the Apple Watch, I wasn't sure if it's running or cycling, but my best guesstimate is also running. So we have these two reference values and let's start with the Garmin cycling view to max. And this actually gave me a super high view to max of 69 last measured two days before my cycling VU2 max real test. So that should be comparable. It's actually still that same value at the moment. And what I used to measure this were different Garmin watches, always connected to a chest strap and also a power meter on my bike, which is required. I'm not sure why I get such a high value of 69. It is fluctuating a bit sometimes, so it was actually above 70 for a while. But in general, it does seem to be way too high and it's the highest estimate out of any devices we will test today. Next, let's look at the same devices, which is usually the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro with a chest strap for running. And here we get a more realistic value. So here Garmin says my VU2 Max is 56 which is actually quite close to my running view to max and actually in the middle of these two estimates. So the average of my cycling and running view to max is 56. So this is specifically a running view to max that Garmin estimates. So this is actually not that bad. Of course, it's really N is one. So we need many more tests and I can hopefully do it in the future. But just to give you a first indication, this isn't that bad. Then the Garmin Instinct 3 actually was spot on with a running VU2 max of 54, though it was measured a month before, so it might have changed a little bit, but this looks good. I'm happy enough with that. It's also very close to the other estimate of Garmin. I actually used a completely different Garmin account for this, so it's a very independent metric. Next, let's take a look at the Apple Watch Ultra 2, and this gave me a VU2 max of 50.3. It was even a bit of an older measurement, but it's quite low, a lot lower than it is in reality. This is not something I'm that happy with. It's not close enough to the real value for me to be that useful. Okay, so Apple isn't that great. What about Suunto? Let's take a look at the results for the Suunto Race and Suunto Race S. So first, the race gave me a value of about 52, so not that far away from the real 54. So this might just be okay enough as an estimate. And the race S gave a similar value, though even close to the reality, with a value of 53. And both of these were measured just over two weeks before the actual measurement of the VU2 Max, so quite close in timing. This isn't that bad, honestly. Though it's again N is one, so we need many more tests, and I'm making some plans for this. So please stay tuned for those results. But let's next take a look at the results for the Galaxy Watch Ultra. And the Galaxy Watch Ultra was around the same range as the Suunto Race S with a VU2 max of 52.8, so very close to 53 if we round it. And 53 is again also very close to the reality of 54. 
This actually also isn't that bad. It's also a relatively old measurement, so taken about two months before the VO2 max test in the lab. It actually stems from the testing I did where I was comparing the Apple Watch Ultra 2 to the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra to see which of these devices is better. If you're interested in more details about that, I'll link that video up here. But at least for this particular VO2 max estimation, the Galaxy Watch Ultra seems to be doing better than the Apple Watch Ultra 2, which wasn't always true for all the other metrics, as you can see in the other video if you're interested. Well, let's move on to the next device, the Coral Space Pro. And this gave me the lowest estimate out of any of the devices with a VO2 max of 49. And this was taken a month before my VO2 max testing in the lab, so not super old. And this is really a low estimate. It's really way too low and not that close to reality. It's actually the lowest out of any of the devices well, out of any of these devices right here, we still have to take a look at the results for the whoop strap. Unfortunately, at the time that I'm recording this right now, I don't have the results for the whoop strap yet. I am supposed to get them before release, so fingers crossed. Otherwise, I have to wait for the official release and add that to this video, and then you'll get it a few days after the official release. But regardless if I get it before or after release, let's move to future Rob, who will discuss the results for the whoop strap. Hello, future Rob here. I just got my view to max score from whoop, so let's have a look. So we're going to the strain tab and then down here we can see the vo2 max values okay my vo2 max is 60 according to whoop so slightly on the higher side we can actually see it per month or per six months but let's look at the month one first so it says about a month ago my vo2 max was 59 it went to 61 and now down back to 60 which is okay it's really on the higher side it's what my vo2 master analyzer said in the summer then over the last six months it's actually increased so it was at 58 some six months ago in october and it says it went to 61 then to 60. i'm not really sure what to make of this we can actually ask the whoop coach let's see what it says so what does it says positively influenced my vo2 max so it was because of running, spinning, and a lot of cycling, which is actually also a lot of cycling to work, so commuting. I mean, we'll have to dig into this a bit more, but in the end, what we really care about for now actually is that actual value. So the value according to Whoop is now 60, which is on the higher side. So my running view to max was a bit lower, but my cycling view to max, which is my max view to max in a way, was 58. And it's not really in detail specified for Whoop if it's your running or your cycling view to max, though, by the way, they say you should calibrate it. So with run, it seems to be more of a running VO2 max, then it would be really far off. But my actual max VO2 max for a type of exercise I'm comfortable with is 58, and the 60 is actually not that far off. I'll be really interested to see when we also test it on some other athletes to see if there's an agreement in absolute numbers between the whoop strap and the reference device, but also if there's a correlation. So we can see if athletes with a higher VO2 max according to the reference also have a higher value according to the whoop strap. Let's quickly put those values of the whoop strap in our overview. Ah, uh, but before looking at that, I just noticed whoop some extra information in the app as well. So first of all, they tell you what activities actually improved your view to max according to them at least. So for me, this was a run. So that seems to help. It gives you your cardio fitness level. In my case, it's superior, though it's actually a bit lower in reality. I don't know what the level of 51 right here is, but I guess it's pretty decent. And then they also explain your view to max, which is nice that they add that. And this is important. How is it estimated? They say they use your health and fitness data. So they use your resting heart rate, also heart rate variability, activity details, and demographic data data including age and biological sex so indeed they've trained it with a gold standard data so that's the same kind of test i also use to measure my vo2 max and then whoop gives you your vo2 max estimate and indeed they don't specify if this is a running or a cycling vo2 max so let's assume to be generous to whoop that the highest value i got is what we should compare to the whoop strap and then it's not that far off i'll contact them for a future video to see if they can give more details on this but again let's put these values in that overview and make a general conclusion okay so here we now have the total overview view where I added the whoop strap in black right here in the end manually so I hope I did correctly yes at a value of 60 milliliter per kilogram per minute and indeed compared to all the other devices I tested only Garmin estimated a higher cycling view to max not that high a running view to max and again I'm not sure if this whoop strap view to max is a running or cycling view to max it is indeed not that far from the 58 of my cycling view to max but quite far honestly from my running view to max out of all the other devices I would say that at least for me it appears that Garmin Garmin does pretty well for my running view to max. 
Also, Sunto is not that far off. It's not amazing, but pretty good, I would say. The Galaxy Watch is not that bad. Coros isn't that amazing, though I'm curious if I collect more data if it will improve. And Apple is also way too low. And Whoop in the case again that it just takes my maximum view to max out of the cycling and the running is actually pretty good. It's honestly not that far off, though it could be better, of course. But again, we need more than NS1 in this case, though it's an indication that it could be promising. This was, of course, a very initial test. An NS1 study like this is interesting, though by no means conclusive. To have more conclusive results, we need more data and more testing. So I plan to do two more more videos in the short term and one more video in the long term all on view 2 max so the first one is just on a few athletes to test their view 2 max with both the whoop strap and the reference device and see if this compares well this i can do relatively quickly and i might also do a shorter video in between where i see for many smartwatches with updated data compared to what we saw now how their view 2 max testing did on me and how that compares to the reference device but in the long term i'm also planning a study together with the austrian institute for sports medicine to test multiple people for their view 2 max with both the reference device and also with many different wearables and these will be both elite athletes and like normal people or like medium athletes to see how watches perform on all these categories. This should give us the most complete overview of which smartwatches are good and which are not so good at estimating your VO2 max. Are you interested in the whoop strap now? Either wait for my full review or if you already want to get it use my affiliate link below to get the best discount possible. If in addition to VO2 max you also want to track your blood glucose and learn more about your metabolism and metabolic health check out my discount link to the levels app below which is my favorite app for analyzing data from continuous glucose monitors and also tracking my nutrition many thanks to the austrian institute for sports medicine for their help especially jürgen and david for their enthusiasm if you want to track your vo2 max and you want to do it in vienna check them out below and by the way if you're wondering where i am at the moment i'm actually at my first youtube meeting so i think i'm actually becoming a proper youtuber in the meantime thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video